Okay, so I have already failed this multiple times, but I am going to show you this thing called syncing in After Effects. It's really special. If you're in, if you're a Smash editor, and you want to uh, have some uh, really fancy Smash edits, this is probably what you should do. So right now I have After Effects open, and I have my clip and my song. I already have my song and I have my markers put down already. But when you're trying to put your markers down, you just look at the waveform and you try to find beats. But and most beats are indicated by peaks. So I want to actually show you some workflow stuff, so I'm gonna delete that quick. So the uh so usually the song has like a huge bump in the waveform or something like that when there's a beat. So you just find the ones that you want to sync to and you you put markers on them by dragging this thing over here right here in. So uh you so you gotta so after you put your markers down, you import your clip, and this clip is hella long. Why did I put this shit in my clip pack without cutting it down? But you want to find the first hits. Want to find where the hits are in this. This is where the hit is. So I am going to. Just take that, and I'm going to cut it right before the death explosion. And I'm going to bring that in. I'm gonna press Command Alt or Shift Command T. No, Command Command Alt T. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know how to use After Effects. Please don't flame me. Uh, and you set a keyframe on the areas that you want them to, that you're using and you delete the keyframes at the beginning and the end and the reason for that is when you go into the graph editor and you look at these it gets really small and when you're trying to refine these especially like with the things that you don't need it'll make it harder to do and you'll have to zoom in further so advice from Dandy Man, uh, try to do something that doesn't. Well, just just try to get, do that. I used to not do that, and it didn't do me very well. So I'm gonna find my last hit here too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's drag these. Also, this marker is just there. I don't even think it's actually on the beat accurately. Oh, oh, it is. Wow, Dandy Man, not being a total failure. So, so what you do is you go through the rest of this and you just find your first, just find your hits. You don't have to be as frame uh, perfect, so long as you can get it generally where the where the hit is. But I, I prefer that you do, because otherwise I will I I will scream or some shit. So I'm counting the nair as one hit because that's why I did not see when I'm replicating the sync on the first clip and not to because I don't feel like trying to get used to another song or downloading another song specifically for this tutorial. Mm. 
and I got the last two already. So now you want to go into the graph editor, and most people they do their easy ease stuff outside of the graph editor. But what I do is I like depending like this I. Click this one, the one where it's only, uh, where it only has the uh, little handle on the left side, because usually I just, because usually I use linear keyframes to end out my clips, but you don't need to, and I'm pretty sure it's recommended that you don't. But just to like finish off the slow mo of a clip, I will use linear. Also, to clip the turns to normal speed, I'm using linear for that too. So, you go into your nice easy ease keyframes, press plus on your keyboard to get it where you need it, drag it up. I'm going to downscale this to like 33, 0.3%. That's good. So what you got here is you got your nifty time remap keyframes and generally speaking you want it to go you want the left one to go up and the right one to go down. But you want to make sure that the curve here is still constantly moving up. If it becomes a straight line, like a straight horizontal line, then there will be absolutely no movement at all. And if it goes down, then it will go back in time. Because the height of this line, how how um the vertical positioning of this line, if you were to think of this like math, the x-axis is time, and the y, well the y-axis, well the x-axis is time on your timeline, and your well, left, well, the x-axis is the time on your normal timeline, while the y-axis is your time remap time, or whatever your, or whatever value you're keyframing. So, if it goes down, then the time is going to go back to a value that's already been it. So, quick maths. So what I usually do is I want it to be fast at the beginning, but I don't want it to be like insta fast at the beginning because then it looks kind of weird. So I'll put it to the right a bit. So the slow. So given the information I just gave you, when it slopes, the way that it slopes, the slope of this graph determines how it determines how um, fast it's going. So if it's really steep, like at the end, then it's going really fast. If it's really like gradual, like it is in the middle here, then it'll go slow. And if it's like this, it'll go fast, but not as fast as it goes over here. So you want to do this for pretty much all of your keyframes in the same, but you will want to base it all off of. You'll want to base it all off of where, off of what the hits look like, and like, so you'll do this, like in general for all of them. And then after looking back at your sync, you're going to you're going to look at it at the clips and then see, hey, do I like the way this particular sync on this hit looks? And you're going to go back to that particular hit and you're going to adjust it again. Also you're going to drop frames but we'll fix that later on. Also, I'm turning off audio because it sounds, I'm turning off audio because the game audio with time remap sounds like a fucking bunch of dying rats. So, I've already had two problems. With this one being too slow, Kind of just want that nair to look like one slice, so I'm going to bring this up in a bit more. Time. Yeah. And another issue is right here. I think that's too fast. 
even though everything's kind of too fast. But so I'm going to put this to the and I'm gonna put this one further to the left. And now it looks smoother. Wowza. So see it looks better already. So after you've got your clip synced up, you want to add Twixter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-compose this clip. I'm gonna leave all attributes in this comp. And I pre-compose it twice in case I want to do something else to the clip, to the raw clip itself. So, after you do that, you go back and you scrub through, and you scrub through frame by frame your sync. And you do that while looking at this number right here for your time remap. So, Whenever the number repeats, that means it drops frames. And you want to copy this number, and you want to double click your pre comp, and you want to look at this number right here paste, split, and then go forward one or two frames, split again. Then you're going to go into your effects panel, get Twixter Pro set your input frame rate to the same frame rate as your clip this one is 59.94 fps so i'm going to type in 59.94 and i'm just going to set this to forward twister settings are something that you can take from someone else or learn yourself it's, it just depends on what looks good so now i'm going to go back into this and see how the number is the same, but these frames are now different. That's because of the Twixter that you just put there. So, so from all the way from the frame that we had set up already to 1603, it the frames drop so I'm just going to drag this layer with the Twixter all the way to this point So now Twixter is interpolating all these frames. It looks kind of shitty. So you can change your Twixter settings to fix that. See if it'll look better with motion with the blend. A little bit. Whatever. Aqua's better at this than I am, ask him. But you basically want to do that for each and every time that a frame repeats itself while you scrub through frame by frame. And it'll look better. So. So that's basically it. I didn't do this in Natsu. I used just the normal frame blending that comes with time remap. But this is faster. This renders faster. This, in general, is just really nice and helpful. And I think a lot more people should do it if they want to 
like low, reduce their render times and reduce the warp that Twixter has. Since I know a lot of people just put Twixter on the whole damn thing. And that makes RAM previewing a pain because Twixter takes forever to render. So uh, I hope this helped someone in the world. And 